Very rarely in history do people get the opportunity to vote for true, real, profound change. I would venture to say this is an opportunity that's not even just once in a lifetime opportunity. This is the kind of opportunity that only comes once in many hundreds of years. And it's important, it's crucially important that every morning we wake up, we're cognizant of just how historic and how rare this opportunity is. Because folks, it's not going to come again. I mean, we have been betrayed and let down by politicians year after year after year after year after year. And you hear the same promises, oh, well, we're going to secure the border. Does the border ever get secured, folks? No. no. They say, oh, well, we're going to bring back our manufacturing jobs, but do those jobs ever come back? No. They say they're going to clean up D.C. and kick out the special interests. Do the special interests ever go? No. After eight years of Obama, the special interests are more powerful than ever. The gap between the rich and poor is wider than ever. The control of Wall Street is greater than ever. And the ability of everyday people to control their own affairs is less than it has ever been. When we talk about the American dream dying, when we talk about the American dream disappearing, what we're talking about is the fact that people in this own country are stuck. They can't find a job, they can't find a raise, they can't afford health care, they can't have a safe community, they can't be secure from terrorism. The infrastructure is crumbling, the airports don't work. Our political system sells favors to the highest bidder. And no one in this country, folks, has done more to sell out our government to the highest bidder than Hillary Rodham Clinton. And, and when you think about it, folks, one of the great, great ironies of this race is that in the year of Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary, because of the superdelegates, they went ahead and nominated the face of special interest corruption in America. Yeah. Nobody has taken more money from special interests in return for more favors than Hillary Clinton. The examples go on forever. And one of the things that Mr. Trump has talked about and you probably heard about, is Hillary Clinton has taken millions and millions and millions of dollars, and her husband, from some of the most oppressive, violent, brutal regimes on the face of the earth. And if we, if we as a country, want to stand up for our values, if we want to support the rights of women, the rights of minorities, the rights of gay and lesbian Americans, then we have to say no to Hillary Clinton and the foreign governments funding her. She takes money. She takes money from Saudi Arabia. She takes money from Qatar. She takes money from the United Arab Emirates. She takes money from Brunei. She takes money from countries where women are enslaved and gay and lesbians are put to death. Where it is a capital punishment to be gay in the countries where she takes her money from. Folks, that is disgraceful. And it's time Hillary Clinton apologized to the millions upon millions of people suffering in those regimes that she is lifting up by giving them the blessing of taking their money. When a major official in our government takes millions of dollars and also in some cases personal gifts from oppressive regimes, they are sanctioning indirectly, but they're sanctioning just the same, the atrocious behavior of those regimes. And it's time Hillary Clinton was condemned for doing so. I think all of us are tired of taking morality lectures from somebody who accepts money from the most corrupt regimes in some cases and the most violent regimes in some cases and the most oppressive regimes in some cases on the face of the earth. I don't want to be lectured by somebody who's happily willing to sell favors from the U.S. government in exchange for cash. And I'm willing to venture, I'm willing to venture that the people of the United States of America, when they learn about the extent of this corrupt dealing, when they learn about how much money Hillary Clinton has taken from regimes with blood on their hands, when they learn about that, they will say the United States of America will never put someone that corrupt into the White House.
the leader of the free world, the symbol of democracy and human rights across the world is the United States. And the United States will not choose as its leader somebody who sanctions brutality against women, brutality against gays, brutality against Jews and Christians and everybody else. We are going to elect somebody who stands for and fights for the rights of all people, and that man is Donald J. Trump. And folks, another issue, another issue we get lectured on all the time. Oh man, do we get lectured on this. You can't turn on the TV or pick up your newspaper without getting a sanctimonious lecture on this issue. And that's the issue of immigration security. And Hillary Clinton says, well, well, we can't have a secure border and we can't enforce our laws. Because if we did that, it would tear apart families, Hillary Clinton says. The families being torn apart are the American families who are losing loved ones to an open border. And nobody can run for president of the United States who is not willing to protect American families. That is a pretty fundamental qualification. If you can't stand up and say, I will protect the safety and security of American families, then you are running for the wrong job. And I submit to you folks, the American people will never elect someone like Hillary Clinton who has pledged to dissolve the borders around these United States. No country, no country will ever elect a president who will dissolve its own borders and that's what Hillary Clinton has promised to do. Hillary Clinton has also promised a 550% increase in Syrian refugees. Now, once again, once again Hillary Clinton tells us, well, this is the compassionate thing to do. You know what compassionate behavior would be? Would be using the money to help 10 times as many refugees in their home region. What Hillary Clinton doesn't tell you is that for every dollar you spend bringing a refugee out of Syria into the United States and providing housing, providing medical services, providing jobs, providing welfare, feeding, housing, clothing refugees, for every one you bring into the United States, you could help 11 in their home region. Hillary Clinton is denying support. She is denying support to hundreds of thousands of refugees for the sake of her selfish and corrupt political agenda. And there's another group of people, folks, that are getting left out of this conversation. They're called American citizens. Our inner cities are falling apart. Our rural communities are falling behind. Our children are underemployed. Every penny that is being spent on the resettlement operation is a penny taken out of the pocket of hardworking Americans and their children. We are $19 trillion in debt. We do not have the money for Hillary Clinton's plan to resettle huge portions of the Middle East inside the United States of America. We need to support our American family first. That includes, that includes millions upon millions of Americans living in poverty today. The social contract that makes this country or any country work is that the people like you, the backbone, the heart, the soul, the essence of this country, who go to work every day, who love their children and take care of their families, who follow the rules, the people who make this country move, the people who go, our social contract is that you follow the rules, you do your civic duty, and in return, your government puts you first. When a country loses that social contract, it ceases to be a country anymore. This is the conversation we need to be having in America, folks. I, for one, and I know I speak for all of you when I say this, am not interested in turning America into nothing more than Hillary Clinton's personal bank account. I'm not interested in having the United States become Hillary Clinton's personal wealth management fund. I'm interested, and you're interested, and we're all interested in having a country that is about enriching you, that is about protecting you, that is about taking care of you and the people that you love. That's what a country's all about. Each of us as American citizens taking care of each other and loving each other and supporting each other and standing up for our principles and our values. And that includes not bringing people into our country, as Mr. Trump has said, who don't share our values. 
how does it help America or lift up America or support America to bring anyone into this country, wherever they may come from, who rejects our values, who rejects our tolerant way of living, and who in fact has hatred in their heart for our people. How is that good for America? How is that good for our people? It's not. Hillary Clinton is a career criminal, folks. All you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do is read the book Clinton Cash. Man, it'll turn your hair white. Let me tell you something. One corrupt deal after another, including, by the way, selling 20% of U.S. uranium assets to Russia, while Russia is funneling tens upon tens of millions of dollars to the Bill and Hillary Foundation. Sweet, sweet deals for countries like Saudi Arabia and China while they're giving money to, you guessed it, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Give money to Bill, get favors from Hill. The corruption of Hillary Clinton, the corruption of Hillary Clinton would make many, many, many crime syndicates very envious. The sophistication, the scale, the scope, the dollars involved, we are talking tens upon tens upon tens of millions of dollars. The amount of money that Bill and Hillary have made while pushing deals and pushing policies that have cut out millions of Americans from the workforce, that have driven down wages and jeopardized our national security, is shocking, appalling, and abhorrent. If this election is a referendum on morality, Hillary Clinton loses and she loses badly. If this election is a referendum on decency, Hillary Clinton loses and loses badly. If this election is an election about corruption and integrity, Hillary Clinton will lose and she will lose by historic margins. And I challenge the media to ask Bill and Hillary Clinton about the money they've taken from Brunei, to ask Bill and Hillary about the money they've taken from Russia, to ask Bill and Hillary about their operations in Haiti, to ask Bill and Hillary about the money they've taken from China, the money they've taken from Qatar, the money they've taken from all across the world, to ask Bill and Hillary about the many times State Department business was being conducted while Bill was taking money from the very people under State Department review. These are the things that the media needs to be looking into and needs to be looking into them now. Now there's also some other issues in this election, I'll run through them quickly. There's the issue of jobs, folks. Hillary Clinton supported NAFTA, she supported TPP, she supported the Korea deal. As Bernie Sanders says, Hillary Clinton has supported every trade deal that's destroyed our jobs. Do we want to vote for someone who's going to send all of our jobs overseas? Or do we want to vote for a man who's going to put jobs and wages for American workers first? Do we want to vote for a man who's going to put American families first? Do we want to vote for a man who can't be bought and sold, who can't be, who can't be corrupted by special interests, and who will fight for you and you alone? I think it's time that you had a champion in your corner. I think it's time you turned on the TV and saw somebody fighting as hard for you as the other side fights for the special interests. I think it's time you had somebody in your corner protecting your interests and protecting your values. I think it's time you had somebody who is prepared to kick every last corrupt special interest out of Washington, D.C. And, and let's just run through a couple more things. Donald J. Trump is going to create millions of energy jobs. Hillary Clinton is going to shut down energy all across this country. Donald J. Trump is going to pass tax reform to create millions of private sector good paying jobs. Hillary Clinton is going to raise our taxes and send even more jobs overseas. Donald Trump's going to get rid of regulations destroying our economy. Hillary Clinton is going to regulate companies out of existence except for the companies lining her pockets. On every issue that matters to working people, trade, immigration, energy, taxes, regulation. Hillary Clinton is against the working people of this country. Are you prepared to cast a vote on behalf of working people and stand with Donald Trump? Are you prepared to cast a vote on behalf of secure borders and vote for Donald Trump? Are you prepared to send a message that will echo down through the annals of history that at this moment in America, we took back our country for the working people? And are you prepared, are you prepared to renew the social contract 
that says your value is not measured by how much money you make or how many dollars you contribute, but your value is measured by your worth as an American citizen. <laughs> Folks, this opportunity, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, isn't going to come again. It is rare, it is special, it is unique. And it's incumbent upon all of us to find that last extra measure of devotion and dedication and courage on behalf of our children and their children and their children after to say at this crossroads, at this moment of corruption, at this time of special interest control, with thousands of people suffering every day because of our open border, millions of people suffering every day because of uncontrolled immigration, tens of millions of people losing their jobs and futures. At this moment, at this precipice, at this fork in the road, each and every one of you gave that last extra inch of dedication to return this country to the people sitting in this room today and all across this nation who are the true true leaders of America. It's not the politicians, folks. You are not ruled by anybody. You're not controlled by anybody. Let this be remembered as the year that we return control of the American people to its rightful rulers. We return control of this nation to its rightful rulers, the American citizens. And so you'll be hearing from Donald Trump in a moment. You'll be hearing from the man who's going to do that for you and so much more. You're going to be hearing from the man who's going to make you so proud and so thrilled and the man who's going to secure that border and bring back our jobs and protect us from terrorism. And so the question I have for all of you, and I want you to shout so loud that everyone who betrayed you, everyone who let you down, everybody who betrayed families like the Kate Steinle family, Everybody who betrayed families like the Carrier families in Indianapolis. Everybody who ignored your cries and pleas for help. I want you to shout so loud that it quivers the conference tables in Washington, D.C. Are you prepared, folks, to elect as president a man who will put America first, last, and always? Are you prepared to elect Donald J. Trump as president of these United States? Are you prepared to take back your country? Are you prepared for real change on behalf of America? God bless all of you. God bless this state. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.